ePlan project at the end of the day. However, we know that in the automation of uh, in the automation space, we're not the only players. So we need to. to... This is uh, Sean Mulheron talking here in the live stream at our virtual fair. Now I have a small homework to do, so I'm just going to ask you to join. Uh, I just received a new panel. Uh, 106000, and I was asked actually to change this project slightly around. So uh, this project has in one particular case on this side here, it has a fairly big panel. Um, so what I'm going to do is very quickly, I'm going to change it and exchange it for that panel that I just received. So I'm going to show you here very quickly how we do this. Obviously, this is going to be a version two of my project to keep the original one if ever anyone has any questions about it. So I'm going to quickly create a version two just not to make any differences. Not my project. Uh, it was just sent to me by here a colleague. So I'm going to actually close it. And of course, as I start using it, I will eliminate to a certain point all the revision markers that have been done at this point. So let me just quickly, you know, take away the revision markers. So we start from scratch and we'll start right away the revision marking by creating my first uh, revision. I'll call it right away revision number two and changing uh, panel A2.5 for a retail one. 06000, which I just received at the moment, right? So this is going to be my change. Here we go. And of course, now this is my project. The project is all fine and dandy. I don't have to do any changes in the schematics. That's all good, especially not on A1 here. I was asked to change the A2. That's good. So I'm going to go and jump in right away into my A2 panel. And this is the panel I have. And it was a bit, well, it's it's big. It's huge. Uh, we don't need that much. So let's see how ePlan handles the exchange to a smaller part. Quite interesting, most likely. So here I did, of course, download the uh, part from the ePlan data portal, which by the now you should know, the data portal contains all the parts from different manufacturers. Retail has, of course, the panel with its digital twin. And let's see how it actually reacts if we exchange the part. So we get this. And this is nice because it's done prior to, you know, building it. So it's a lot cheaper. I already got the panel. So now I have to make these things fit on here. So how do I make them fit? Well, um, here you can see some of them are actually placed outside the uh, panel. So what I'm going to do in this case here, I'm just going to eventually delete them. But by deleting them, you're not necessarily deleting them because if they are in the schematics, they are out here. So now let's open here the more specific backplate. And on the back plate, you can see that we extend a little bit over the back plate. There's an interesting feature about ePlan that will allow me to stretch all these different items and to make them fit exactly as I need. So in the first time, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reduce the size of the um, these different docks. So to reposition them adequately. Right, like this, boom, boom, there, let's make it short, let's make this one short too, and we will see what we can do from that point on. So maybe we can take this one and stretch it out right to the corner here and see what happens. Now I can see I have a collision check here because there's a reserved area down at the bottom there that was actually protected. So it won't actually let me do this unless I go to this spot here. I have to move it a little bit. That's cool. So what I can do and try out is if I can take this guy here and I'm going to move it. Now, of course, if I move it, it may not be attached to the right surface. 
I'm going to take the bottom corner here and I'm going to place that bottom corner exactly where I need it. Hmm. See, this one will not place unless I turn off the collision check. So I'm going to turn off the collision check, which temporarily will is a little bit dangerous, of course, if you actually work with this, because you could place items eventually in an area where you don't necessarily want to go, right? So a collision check was found, continue anyways. Of course, it's going to tell you, but that's all nice and dandy. So what we're going to do is we're going to stretch again <clears throat> here like this. This is good. We're going to now adjust these ones very quickly to attach them right here. So we got them there. We got this one going. And I can say that the top ones here, <clears throat> I'll have to make it shorter and I'll probably attach it right there. Cool. So what I can do is eventually I could move this one down to, let's say, to this height here, stretch this one out. This would be perfect like that. And then, uh, of course, these two objects, I can pick them all together, just move them, have them placed either here or right on top here. Maybe we can go, maybe we can move them a little bit closer here. And that would actually allow us to move this guy around. So this one, I'll just move it over to this corner here so we don't have any issues on that side. And I'll just stretch this guy out to here. So because I want to keep the rest free. Okay, this one down there. And that will allow me. Do we keep this one or not? We can shorten it down if we want to. No problem. Make it exactly the same length as this. So we keep the whole space open. That would be nice. And I think we will have these things pretty much fitted, right? So the only things remained are these two here, or these three we can delete. And this one, last one, let's stretch it down so it actually fits right on here. Now, this is the back plate. Is there anything else on this guy that I had to check out? Let's see. We had a couple of push buttons. Of course, those ones will realign them. So what's the best way is probably just take them, eliminate them here from the graphics, and use the smart feature we have within ePlan here where you can just pick the, the objects, right? We have them here, and then you can reposition them. But these are all the objects that have not yet been placed or that we forgot. Now, these push buttons were actually spare push buttons, so it was probably not the best idea to just get rid of them. So what we will have to do is just a small undo. This is an interesting thing because in the undo, you can say, okay, let's do undo until these push buttons here, and we'll just move them one by one. <clears throat> in this case here, it's actually a good thing to turn on again the collision check. Because when you do move these objects, you want to make sure that you can place them because in some areas you will just not have enough room in the back to actually place them because they will collide with objects that are inside your schematics. Now, of course, all of you know that small trick. As you can see, you can not place them one on top of each other. You can also define a certain distance, an offset, let's say 75 millimeters which would be an offset to pick right the center of this one. So you have the same distance for all of them. This is on the door outside. Door outside. Perfect. There we go. And we got those ones placed. Is there anything else? There is an overload we haven't really uh, put in. 
we'll have to study this one there is um oh this one is a little bit bigger this actually is a i don't know if i'm going to be able to fit it we'll see maybe we'll have to change it to a different panel uh, all in all so if i go back to my back plate let's see if i can find some space where uh, this special unit a lot bigger than i thought could actually fit so let's see if i take this in see how big it is hey what i can do is probably make it fit right there right if i move this guy out of the way i could probably have this one placed right there pretty much where it was and then I can just take this guy and move it right in the spot that is available here. So in this case, it's here. Boom. There we go. Uh, what is the... I need a little bit... It's probably just a matter of a few <clears throat> millimeters. Let's see if we can view why it's actually challenging me. Because we have within ePlan some mounting clearances that are requested. And in this particular case, you can see that they have mounting clearances on the right, left hand side. Now, since these components are not heating components, I would actually take the risk to place it like that. So again, I have to turn off the collision check. Of course, it's at my own risk, right? It's going to tell me again if I do place it right there. It's going to tell me, hey, be careful. You will be colliding with um, the mounting clearance that is expected. But at least you can place it there. And knowing that there is a good clearance at the top, good clearance at the bottom, you should be fine. This is all nice and dandy. Cool. So I got my panel. It's updated. Uh, what is left? Quite easy. You just take this project. You make sure that you generate the project reports. Based on some templates, we call them report templates, where we define what kind of reports we want, bill of materials, model views, 2D drilling views. We actually organize our data so that the next people behind us can actually use this information because this 3D environment, this digital twin is nice, but it's, it's even nicer if I can recuperate the data into the manufacturing phase. Uh, one of the manufacturing phase that I'm really keen about is the NC drilling because I don't have to drill the holes. I just have to send this panel to the Perfrex machine from Retal, and it's going to do the holes for me. Another thing that I'm interested in also is the routing capabilities. I can check into a little bit later, which will provide me with the wire length to prefabricate the wires. So I don't have to do them, you know, manually. I don't have to do the crimping. I don't have to do the cutting. I don't have to put the labels on. So it's a lot of time saving. There's also another time saving effect that is quite interesting is the labels uh, can be outsourced into a Phoenix contact marking system, for instance. Here, I outsource my devices, my wire tags, my cable tags, everything in one single click. And again, we transform the digital data that we have from our digital twin and from our schematics. And we outsource this in this nice interface that Phoenix contact has created for us the project complete planning and marking software, which now then handles the same data we have produced with ePlan into its project complete to actually print the labels. So all you have to do at that point is feed the printer. It's really a cool thing because I just have to watch the tool talk to each other and bingo it's done so the step number one as i said was uh, the list of all my devices the second step were the labels 
Now in between, it's asking me if I want to update. I don't have to update this. And here we go. We can see the different wire markers. We can see everything else that was basically imported directly from ePlan without me having to touch anything. Now, at the end of the day, I'm going to take this project and I'm going to share it with some new people to view. And this is called the Cloud ePlan Cloud eView. It's free. Every ePlan user can use it. And I can, at this point here, simply take my project and upload it. And when I do so, so technically if I add this project onto the uh, cloud, um, everyone that I assign a permission to can actually view it. So here is exchange the A or plus A 2.5. It was 2.5 with the retail dot 160.600 smaller panel. There we go. And everything is done. Let's go and check out where Sean is on his site. So he probably is already, and he has continued here at once. Yeah, cool. This is, I think, a, a good message. Uh, maybe when, when there's uh, nice. collaboration between partners, maybe that are not completely working on.